So if you've been following the various ecosystems that exist in FPV, the DJI system, the analog sphere systems with the plethora of cameras and VTXs that they have, you must have heard of the niche following of Sharkbite. So they are a relatively smaller group of people who follow the technology developed by HD Zero and manufactured by Fat Shark, and they call it Sharkbite, which supposedly is a direct competitor or even better than DJI Digital. So I'm gonna check it out. I have the VRX right here, the receiver, which I put on my goggles, Shark Bite, and I have the three types of uh, VTXs or the transmitters. So the one is the 5M1, 5R1, I have the 5S1. So I'm gonna have to put it on my new build which I have a speedy B F7, I have Axis Flying Motors, and then I'm gonna put Shark Bike on it and see whether it lives up to the hype. To the hype of Baby Shark do 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 Baby Shark do 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 Baby Shark do 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 Baby Shark So which VTX would you choose for Shark Bite? really depends on the frame that you have. So you have three types, like I said, you have the 5S1, you have the 5R1, and then you have the 5M1. The top two is going to be the easily found ones, is gonna be the 5S and the 5R, which is, I think, uh, S is for sport, R is for race, M is for mega, I have no idea. But the first top two, the 5S and the 5R, 25 millimeter mount, 20 millimeter mount, is 200 milliwatts and the 5M is a double stack 500 milliwatts. The differences really, I think, is not just gonna be governed by how much power you actually want, is actually gonna be on what frame you want. If it's a short frame, uh, if it's a race frame, you probably want the uh, 5R. If it's a whoop, you want the 5S. If it's a bill uh, like my freestyle bill where you actually want a little bit more penetration with the 500 milliwatts and you have space to accommodate is one you're gonna have to have the 5M. So let me take it out of the boxes and actually show you how it all looks like. Quick shout out to my favorite store, DroneForSpeed.com. You get the same prices as in the US without the expensive shipping and an additional 2% discount at checkout. Superb, DroneForSpeed.com. I think that everyone will be interested in is going to be the 20 by 20 millimeter mount, which theoretically should be the smaller size, but this one is the 5R. 0.1 and it's 20 by 20 but if you see here it's actually a bit longer than you usually expected so let's see how long this actually is okay Th this is actually about 44 millimeters in length so 44 millimeters in length and let's see uh, if if I chose this as the VTX for my sharp bike build, and where would I be able to put it? If you can see here, it doesn't really fit, right? So if I placed it on top of the stack like that, you're gonna have some difficulty on really finding a stack that actually fits this 5R.1. I think you could, uh, most of the YouTubers are able to find it, but for this particular build, I'm not able to fit that in. So let's see, what about the other one, the 25 by 25 millimeter. 25 by 25 millimeter mount is actually quite popular for whoop size. So if you see here, um, it's wider, right? Uh, compared to the slimmer profile of the 5R, but then the 5R is longer. So I think in terms of actual area, the area of the two really are the same, which explains why both are 200 milliwatts. Okay, uh, maybe it's just the, when you look at the chips that actually go on here, you have two big chips right there, one, two big chips there. Uh, it's essentially fitting uh, all the same designs on two different IC boards, right? So uh, again, it depends on the mount that you actually want. I would imagine the 5S, even though it's made for whoops, 25 by 25 is gonna be more popular. So in the box, it actually gives you the mount um, adapter. So you can then mount the 25 by 25, like, like so, and then still be able to go 
on a 20 by 20. So in this case, it's a 30 by 30, can't quite fit it. So what's my solution for my conundrum? It's not the 5R, it's not the 5S, 5M. So the 5M, uh, I already pre-soldered it. You can see here, it's actually, again, really taking the same design and putting it double stack. So you have one uh, which is the video stack, one is the uh, radio frequency stack, the RF stack, right? But because of this size, it saves the area on the width and length, but then increases it in height. So, but then this kind of design fits in my frame, my SpeedDB frame right here. It's good because it's also 500 milliwatts, but now you, at least for me, I'm beginning to worry about the integrity of the screws in between. So there must be something that protects uh, the integrity of this uh, board, because I can imagine this is probably less durable compared to this design. This design uh, where it's flat, it's uh, wider, and it's more distance away from the screws, screw mounts is probably gonna be more durable compared to this, where you can see the vibrations from the bottom and top will create that um, inconducive state and probably higher resonance, which I can imagine will either induce interference or induce failure. So my solution then for that is trying to look for a mount that is able to uh, do two things. One is fit on the frame and also double as protection. So in this case, I found this on Thingiverse. Uh, this basically this uh, mount right here printed out. Okay. So then it goes to, uh, I can then um, slot in the uh, standoffs for the, uh, for the frame. And then now I can place it like a tray like that, okay, and then lift that up, and then now place it right there, screw the standoffs in, and then the um, 3D print will provide some stability for the stack, uh, hopefully cushioning it a little bit from vibration, also um, partially stopping any debris from going in, Right, I may want to, I don't want to cover all because I want the airflow because this 500 milliwatts VTX is going to get a little bit hot and you don't want it to fail. So um, on the bench, you really want a fan blowing at all times, but when you're flying, you want the airflow to continuously try to um, minimize, the, uh, minimize the effect of heat on the IC. So. I think this mount does it all. So we have the openings in the, at, the, at the bottom. So, okay, and then I can have the UFL connector plugged in to like that, right? So minimizes the interference between uh, the LiPo plug to the um, antenna. So that should uh, also protect my the integrity of my uh, digital visual quality. So now let's take a closer look at the 5M.1. Okay, so you have these uh, Phillips screws holding the two boards, like that, the sandwich board. Uh, and then you have the UFL connector. UFL is much better than, sorry, this is MMCX. I kept saying UFL. This is MMCX, uh, much better than the UFL connector. And especially when you have a uh, right angle UFL that should hold it in place right as right angle mmcx should hold that in place okay so the way it's soldered uh is actually uh if you look at it from the top the this uh, small solder point is going to be the uh the voltage and the ground and in terms of the voltage right now the rating is up to 26 volts and according to sharp bite manual, it is uh, imperative that you actually put a capacitor on the leads of the LiPo. So I have a capacitor right there, already installed, okay? And then the, uh, it's normal, like any normal um, VTX, you have the RX TX, which then gives you smart audio access. So the R, uh, the R goes to the T on the flight controller, and then the T goes to the R on the flight controller. 
So the way I would then solder it on, I would solder in where the usually I put in the uh, VTX for analog and then I would just solder that in with the wiring trying to avoid as much as I can interference from the leads of the LiPo and from the ESC. Clicked, 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 clicked. Yes, it is now installed. It is now in. Okay. All right, so now I'm hoping the lock is sufficient. Okay, now let's put it in the tray. So I'm gonna put this underneath like that, like so and then solder on the VBAT and RX TX. Right, getting ready for the test flight. I have my shark bite on my Skyzone 04X. I'm using Express RS 915 megahertz. So let's start off with the flight. Looking at the contrast and image quality, I think the only difference between this and DJI is really the camera because with the Runcam Nano HD, smaller image sensor, I um, mean, it's not that great. Maybe I could tweak a little bit to make it a little bit sharper, but I'm really, really impressed with the amount of non-existent of breakout. Right now, I'm using the uh, Luminaire AX2 Stubbies and if you can see here I'm under the tree so there's a little bit of interference between the trees the stubbies are in uh in the path of my head so right now my quad is right behind me and I'm seeing very little breakup so this is much much better compared to when I fly analog in this space but the only way to know really is to do a penetration test if you recall I've done this before behind that building a lot of concrete so I'm gonna put the side by side a little bit after I make the turn between this and my uh, previous rush tank to run so let's go in slow mo okay you can see now on and Analog is actually worse compared to digital digital and right now you can see a little bit more color on digital compared to analog which is black and white you can barely make out anything on analog but I can still fly on digital so digital wins this round with 500 milliwatts compared to analog at 800 milliwatts so please upgrade to short bite this is the future okay this ends the penetration test subscribe like and share